I wasn't going to mention the hat at all. Would you like me to talk about the hat? I think you could not talk about the hat. I, I think I could not talk about the hat. Like I... Like why... Why does this dumbass on TV have a beanie hat with a propeller? No, they are going to see six minutes of the show and they are going to know that this hat is... If, if, oh, hi everybody. Uh, welcome to April. Uh, it's Keith Explains time. Uh, I hope they push the buttons in the room. Look, I'm looking at the wrong camera. Well, even, we got a studio full of studio professionals and I'm still doing it wrong. Uh, and before we started, uh, they were like, you got to talk about that hat. I wasn't going to talk about the hat. Um, I have a hat on. Um, I have a hat on merely because as I was leaving my house, uh, I remember that it was raining outside in California right now, uh, which it does for about three months of the year every 15 years. Um, and this is those three months of that 15 years when it's raining out. Uh, and so I was like, I should get a hat so my hair doesn't get wet. Uh, and then I remembered, I don't care if my hair gets wet. I'm not going to be outside that long. But I kind of walked over to where my hats are, and then I saw my beanie hat, and I thought, I haven't worn the beanie hat on TV for a while. And I'm the kind of nerd that owns a hat with a propeller beanie on top of it. And if you don't show this kind of thing off every once in a while, uh, the IRS doesn't let you deduct it from your taxes. So now this hat has become deductible uh, against the vast Keith Explains Empire profits. Uh, and it's just sweet, sweet cash for me is what it is. Uh, anyway, welcome to the show. Uh, as you know, we didn't tape last month. Uh, I say as we know, but you didn't care. No one noticed that we didn't tape. I didn't get any emails. Hey, Keith, are you okay? Anything wrong? Is there a reason you didn't tape this month? Uh, I think I'd mentioned in February we weren't taping in March. We weren't taping in March because I was on a boat uh, when we would have ordinarily been taping. I was, I was, I was not even in America when we should have been taping this TV show. I was, I believe, Thursday night. Um, I was on a boat uh, in the Mexican waters, uh, and I'm pretty sure I was drunk. In fact, I'm I'm almost certain I was drunk because every night in the boat. Uh, I, I I had stuff to drink because we bought one of them drink packages where drinks are basically you paid from up front. So they're basically free. Um, so I would just go to bars and I would pick the next beverage I hadn't had yet. And I'll say, I'll have one of those. Uh, and if I'm recalling correctly, Thursday night, I think, is when... Uh, so I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat full of nerds. I'll get to this later if I have time. Boat full of nerds, uh, bars drink package so I just wave the badge uh, and they they make me a drink whatever drink I ask for uh, and then I was tipping two dollars uh, in a two dollar bill uh, so they'd gotten used to me I'm the guy the crazy guy with the two dollar bills um, and I've been working my way through the drink menus drinking one of everything uh, and then I said hey what can you make that's interesting uh, and he said have you had a wing wing yet and I was like I have not I haven't seen it in the menus he's like it's not in the menus and I was like okay make me a wing wing uh, and near as I can tell, uh, based on anecdotal evidence uh, from the following morning, um, he just poured some of every alcohol they had behind the bar into a glass uh, and then gave it like two shakes and then carefully handed it to me as if it would explode. Uh, and then I went off and drank it. Um, Friday morning, uh, I think a lot of people were like, hey, Keith, are you OK? And I'm like, yes, why? And they're like, well, you seemed kind of drunk last night. And I was like, no, no, I'm a professional. I... I, I drink a lot. That was, I don't know. Anyway, welcome uh, to April to Keith Explains. Uh, we got, I made a long list of things to talk about because uh, that's what I do. Uh, and we're going to talk about some of them. Uh, first up is running. Um, as you recall, back in November or December or when, uh, I mentioned uh, that I was trying to run more because uh, I'm fat and I need the exercise, uh, but I'm cheap. And so I don't have exercise equipment in my house. Um, and so what I do to exercise is I pull on my bag of sweatpants and my sweatshirt and I put my heart monitor on and I get my phone and my headphones and then I go out and I run. And I say run, but I really mean jog because I've seen people that run and I see them from the back as they, rapid, as, as they rapidly recede into the distance because they are moving quickly uh, and I am moving slowly because I am jogging. Um, so I was, I was doing okay, like November, December, I was, I was jogging, uh, like three or four times a week I was getting out. I was doing, you know, eight or 10 K pretty frequently. 
And then as I mentioned, I think I mentioned this before, I got the plantar fasciitis, uh, or as I think of it, the, the screw you, stop running for a while, you're old, your body is breaking down disease. Uh, or my foot for no reason whatsoever hurt, and the doctors told me they couldn't do a damn thing about it because it wasn't actually anything. It was just a muscle that was pulled and unhappy, and if I was lucky, it would go away, and if I wasn't lucky, welcome being old. Your foot's going to hurt all the time. Um, so since then, uh, my foot still hurts a lot, although it gets better, like I've been icing it. Um, like I have these little things, I just go home and I put my foot on the pad and I sit there for a while and I watch the TV and my foot's cold and then it feels a little better. I do these stretches, I do these weird stretches in the stairway. Like if you want to creep people out, just stand at the top of a stairway with your foot kind of over the edge, kind of bouncing, you know, your weight up and down on your foot because people come out and they see you at the top of the stairway and they think, well, clearly he is coming up the stairs. And then like three seconds later, they notice you haven't actually moved. And then as they get closer to you, they notice you're, you're stuck on the stairway. And occasionally there's this brief flash of, is something wrong? Do I need to go get help? Is he, oh no, he's just standing there doing a thing with, and then they just walk by in silence. Because they don't, they don't want to make eye contact in case I'm a crazy person. Um, so I got the, the foot stretching thing I do. Um, and eventually, I, anyway, and I was doing all this because I was training for a marathon. Uh, which, as we know, is something a person like me should never do. Uh, because it is too long and I'm too old and too out of shape. Uh, and I'm still, I would still like to manage to get to a marathon before July, before I turned 51. See, then I could say I ran a marathon when I was 50, and everyone would go like, my God, you're a, you must be a fit guy in shape. I'd be like, no, I'm just a dumb guy uh, that thought I could run a marathon when I was 50. Um, that's, that's what I've been doing, right? So I, I didn't run for like two months, because they were like, your foot's bad. And like a couple weeks ago, after I got back from boat, because um, I'd walked around the boat a lot, and my foot hurt, um, and I did stuff on the boat, and my foot would hurt, my foot wouldn't hurt. There was one night on the boat, uh, they had Nerd Prom, uh, where uh, this, this band that I kind of know uh, just held a, they, they played music from the 80s uh, for prom, uh, and we all went there to this tiny little nightclub, uh, and they played the music, and everyone wore fancy clothes uh, as if it were prom. Like, you'd wear what you wore to prom, but I didn't wear what I wore to prom because I just rented that. Uh, so I wore my I wore my checked suit, which is a suit just it's a black and white suit it's covered with check marks, uh, which everyone was like, "Hey, cool suit!" And I was like, uh, and then at prom I did what I the only kind of dancing I know how to do, uh, which is hopping. Uh, and then the next morning, uh, as this is the reason I'm on the topic, the next morning I had to sit in my room with my foot in a bag of ice for half an hour because it really hurt. Uh, but then it got better, and so after I got back from the boat. It occurred to me, I just got to give up on my foot hurting. I'm just going to start running again, just short distances. Hi, this isn't going to edit in cleanly. Uh, <laughs> I want you to know something terrible happened here in the studio. Uh, something terrible that is probably my fault. Um, and so we had to stop recording for a little while. And then we were going to start recording again. And here's the funny thing. We don't know when exactly the terrible thing happened. So now I have to go back and talk about all the things that, ha that I was talking about after the terrible thing happened, but we don't know when that is. So we're guessing uh, that that I hadn't yet talked about nerd prom on the boat. And so now I'm going to mention, so I'm on the foot, right? I'm on the, my foot hurts. I'm walking around all the time. My foot hurts. It's slowly getting better. Um, and one night in the boat, they had nerd prom, uh, which is, it's like regular prom, uh, except it's in a boat full of nerds. Um, and when I was in high school, I was, terribly scared and embarrassed and, and shy at prom. Uh, but nerd prom on the boat, I'm old. I don't care what y'all think anymore. Uh, I'm going to put on my checkered black and white suit, uh, and I'm going to go to nerd prom, and I'm going to drink my free beverages. Uh, I'm going to dance to the 80s music uh, that, that they're playing at nerd prom. Uh, and by dance, I mean I'm going to do the only thing I can do these days for dancing. Uh, which is hop. Uh, I just hop up and down, uh, hopefully to the beat of the music. Um, someone told me a while ago 
the whole purpose of a bass in a band is the, the bass is the rhythm. So I try to listen to the bass and then I hop to the bass or to the drum. Just whatever, I, just I hop a lot, um, uh, which from the perspective of the foot uh, is important because uh, after I spent like two hours hopping uh, while somewhat drunk, uh, the next morning my foot really, really hurt. And so I had to have them bring me a, a, a couple containers full of ice. Uh, and then I stuck them in this bag we have that we had stuffed full of cheese in a can. It was clean, people. Um, so then I had a, this insulated bag that previously had held cheese full of ice into which I just plunged my foot. And I just sat there uh, and watched the, the TV for a while, which was showing other stuff on the ship. It was great. Um, that's, that was, that was that. So after we get back from the boat, uh, I decided to start running again because my foot doesn't hurt when I'm running as it, as I discovered. Um, so I'm slowly trying to work myself back up, uh, to where I can get to a marathon before I turn 51, at which point I assume I'm going to die or, or something or be unable to run a marathon. Maybe they'll, they'll have stopped running by then, uh, or they won't do them. They'll just send me a letter, like, Dear Mr. Statenfield, you are no longer allowed to run more than 8K at a time. Uh, we're worried about you. Uh, please don't run a marathon. Okay, so that, that's that whole thing. Um, so I've been to a couple runs since then, just myself, and I liked it. I'd, I'd already paid for them. A couple of those weekend runs where they close the streets and everyone hates you. They drive by and they honk. And then you're like, screw you people, we paid. Um, and then... Whenever I run, I'm a nerd, so I have to use little apps to run to keep track so I can later go back and look at the maps. I never go look at them, but I could. Like, I have numbers. So, like, I know how fast I ran, and I've figured stuff out. Like, I don't like, like, like running up hills, I lose, like, 10% of my speed running up hills. And I've said I don't run fast, so that just means worse. But then downhill, I don't go 10% faster downhill. I only go, like, 8% faster downhill. So... Like a perfectly flat course, I could run 2% faster than a... It's crazy. Um, and then after I finish running, when, when I'm in the little RunKeeper app and I say done, and it says, how was the run? And it's got the three little pictures. It's got the, the sad face, and it's got the... And then it's got the smiling face. I never pick smiling face. I, I don't know who would ever pick smiling face at the end of a run. Uh, I generally pick the face, uh, and occasionally I pick the sad face, uh, and then, then I take a picture uh, of me after the run, all sweaty, with a hat on, just all sweaty, just looking, uh, and then and it saves that photo. I don't know why. Uh, maybe they're looking at photos with AI, going like, does, does, does his face in the picture match the face he picked? Um, and then it asks me questions like, what shoes did you use? And I always just say, like, my shoes, because I got one set of shoes, really. Uh, who'd you run with? Nobody. I'm too slow. Um, and then it says, do you want to post to Facebook? And I always say yes. Uh, and I always post it to Facebook. And it posts this picture to Facebook, the, that picture I just took. And then it superimposes the distance and my pitiful speed to Facebook. Uh, and I do that for two reasons. Uh, first of all, it vaguely keeps me honest. See, I've told you people I'm trying to run. If you follow me on Facebook, you could see my pictures. Uh, and secondly, I desperately want your approval. Like, I desperately want all the people that then see that photo to click like so that I think they like me for some sad... That's what I do. That's what I do. Um, it helps me. I got, I got the Apple Watch, so, like, uh, I, I get all my rings closed, whatever good that does. Um, like, all, all these people I know, like, during the day, it's constantly telling me that this person closed their rings or this person closed their rings. I very rarely manage to see. I didn't even close my rings yet. Um... There's that. That's running. That's all I. That's really all I got to say about running. I'm still hoping to do a marathon by July. Not sure if I'm going to get there. I might have to do two half marathons. I mean, that would vaguely count if I did them close enough together. Yeah. Ah, what else? Hamilton. Uh, we went and saw Hamilton. Uh, it's a musical. It's up in San Francisco. You probably heard of it. Uh, if you're, you probably heard of it. Um, you either desperately want to go see Hamilton. Or Hamilton's that thing that uh, Vice President Pence went to where they talked to him, and so they're terrible people. Um, 
And I'll briefly describe the plot. For those of you that know about Hamilton, you know what the plot is. It's, it's a musical based on the life of Alexander Hamilton, comma, uh, one of America's founding fathers, uh, who was shot in a duel like in his 40s or late 30s, I don't remember when, 40s. Um, and so, like, no one, everyone knows he's one of the founding fathers, kind of. He's on the $10 bill. He's that guy. Um, he's the guy that, he did a lot of stuff. Uh, it's, it's a lovely musical. Uh, if you have a spare $1,200, uh, you should buy a ticket to it to go watch it. Uh, if you don't have a spare $1,200, uh, you should spend $12 and buy the soundtrack. And it's almost as good. Um, which I know because, like, a couple years ago, I hadn't, I'd vaguely heard of Hamilton the musical. I knew it was kind of popular on Broadway. Um, and then we went on this nerd cruise, like, three years ago, and they, people were, like, singing Hamilton songs. And I was like, oh, okay, Hamilton, whatever. People know the songs. Nice to see the musical. And then, like, a couple weeks later, after we got back, um, like, one of my friends was like, hey, the Hamilton soundtrack is on sale today. You should buy it. It's, like, $8. And I was like, sure, I'll go buy it. And I bought it, didn't think anything more of it. Just sat in my iTunes library for a while. Um, and then we were driving back from uh, Lake Tahoe, because we were up there for a thing. I was like, hey, we, I guess we can listen to the Hamilton soundtrack, because it's like a three and a half hour drive home, and it's like a three hour soundtrack. So we, we could hear it, because I've heard it's good, and other people hum it. Uh, and then we... Uh, we had a tiny mistake. Uh, the first time we tried to listen to the Hamilton soundtrack, uh, my phone was in shuffle mode. It doesn't make a lot of sense in shuffle mode. Um, we figured that out about the third song. It's like, does this seem plot-wise? Like, and I was like, look, was, oh, we're in shuffle mode. That's why nothing makes sense. So then we put it in non-shuffle mode. We said track one, play track one, keep going. Uh, and by the time we got home, I we had heard the Hamilton soundtrack, and it was, it was pretty freaking good. Uh, and I was sad, because, uh, as you know, um, it turns out the, the musical's kind of sad in the second act, uh, and it's sad at the end, because Hamilton gets killed in a duel. I, I, I give that away. Hashtag spoilers. Um, if you didn't know that, you never paid attention in history class. Um, so I don't feel terrible about you. Or you're Canadian. <laughs> but you, I'm sure that's on the citizenship test, though. I mean, I... I, I think Canadians probably learn about American history. I mean, why wouldn't they? How much Canadian history could there be? Uh, polar bears? Um, uh, Native people? Hate the French? America? Uh, I don't. I don't know about a, I don't know a lot about Canada. Although I do think I probably need to learn more about Canada because I don't. I don't think they'll let me come live there. I don't know a lot about Canada, and I might. We all might need to be moving to Canada, people. That's what I'm saying. Don't want to give it away. Uh, anyway, um, so Hamilton, right? We, we had listened to the soundtrack. We listened to it once because I thought it was, you know, I thought we should listen to this. I paid $8. I don't want to waste that money. Uh, but it was good enough that we've listened. I've listened to it a bunch since then. Uh, if, you, if you were going to put out 1200 bucks to go buy Hamilton tickets, which again, if you're rich, if you have... If $1,200 is the kind of money that you might just find in your couch and go, oh, I'd wondered where that was, um, then you should spend $1,208 uh, and you should buy the soundtrack so that and listen to it a couple times before you go to the play. Because first of all, it is very fast uh, and a lot of stuff happens. And I think you're just going to miss stuff if you're going in blind, hoping that your your three-hour thing at Hamilton is going to be enough. Um, it's a recommendation. You don't have to do that. Uh, if, if you're $1,200 rich, you don't need to listen to me, uh, is what I'm saying. <sighs> but yeah, it was, a, it was a great musical. We went and saw it. Um, you know, I, I sat down and turned to the woman next to me and said, I hope you don't mind if there's some humming. She said, no, no, everyone hums. Uh, and we were, we were singing the songs. Uh, and in the sad songs, the theater got very dusty. The theater got very, very dusty a couple times. There was nothing I could do. Very, very dusty. My eyes were very watery from the dust, people. <sighs> and we got to the end. I said, I said it made me sad. Uh, it made me sad for a couple reasons. Um, first time it just made me sad because it's sad. Uh, and the second time, we saw it twice. Did I mention we saw it twice? Because um, we're, we're season ticket holders. We could buy an extra pair of tickets. 
uh, and there's no one that I like more in my life who I would give my other pair of Hamilton tickets to than me. Um, so we went and saw it twice, people. Um, and the second time, like I got to the end and I was sad because the musical sad. Uh, but I was also sad for two other reasons, which the first time hadn't quite occurred to me. Um, the first reason was it occurred to me suddenly that our country is kind of screwed up now. And it was kind of screwed up then. But I think when it was kind of screwed up then, it still seemed like it worked, like everyone seemed to care and was trying to do the right thing. And I don't know if that's true anymore. Like, I kind of think the opposite of that is true now. So that made me further upset. Uh, and the second thing uh, that made me upset is it occurred to me that all of the people managed to get a huge amount accomplished a day. Uh, whereas I struggled to get even a couple things done. Like I sit at work and I managed to fix like two bugs after hours and hours of work. And then I realized that like some of the people wrote like 40 essays each 20 pages long. Like we're taking two days, we're gonna write a 30 page essay and 250 years later, people are still be reading that essay and going, this is a great essay. Look at all this cool stuff in it. Um, I, I don't think I'm ever gonna be that smart or good uh, at anything. Um, in my vague defense, uh, I think cocaine was legal in the 1780s. So maybe they were all really high and that's why they could write so fast. Um, I did mention vacation. Uh, we, we, we weren't taping last month because we took a two week vacation. We went down, we saw, we saw Hearst Castle. Uh, we had never seen Hearst Castle, I'd heard of it. Like I told my parents a couple times, hey, you should go see Hearst Castle. Uh, both because uh, I think they might enjoy Hearst Castle uh, and because since they come visit me for like three weeks at a time, occasionally I would like to get rid of them for a couple days. Uh, and Hearst Castle is just far enough away that maybe you could do it as a day trip, but it'd be better if you like got a hotel in the area and went down and spent a day or two and drove around and looked at some things. It'd be nice, Mom and Dad. You could see Hearst Castle. Give me a break is what I'm saying. Hearst Castle just... Um, uh, we drove down to San Diego, so we kind of drove past Hearst Castle. So we drove to San Luis Obispo, and then we went to Hearst Castle the next day, and then we drove to North Los Angeles, and then we went to Universal Studios and uh, Hearst Castle. So we, like, we, we left our hotel, uh, and I had been told it's like a 45-minute drive, and I get in the car, and I punch in the, the mumble, mumble, ways, numbles, and it's like, you're an hour and 15 minutes away from Hearst Castle. I'm like... That's, that's not good, because we're an hour away from our appointment at Hearst Castle. So I'm driving quickly towards Hearst Castle uh, along Highway 1. Beautiful views off this direction of the ocean. Periodically, as we come around the curves. Uh, and then it's like, hey, you're half an hour away from Hearst Castle. And there's a sign on the right that's like, Hearst Castle, next exit, quarter mile. And I turn... Uh, and then I realized what had gone wrong. Uh, I had punched in the actual address for Hearst Castle. You don't get to actually drive to Hearst Castle. You, you drive to a visitor center, and they put you on a bus, and the bus drives you 25 minutes up this road to Hearst Castle. That, we were on time. Uh, it was great. We got on the bus. We saw this big, ornate house built by a billionaire these days. We call him a billionaire. Back then, he was just a millionaire, multi multi millionaire. Um, a house that he built and loved, but only managed to live in for a couple months every couple years, because that's what millionaires do. I didn't get it. <sighs> it was nice. Uh, then we drove down to Universal Studios, right? We got down there the next day. We went and we saw the, the, saw the West Coast version of Harry Potter Land, uh, which was a lot like the East Coast version of Harry Potter Land, which we saw in Florida last year. Uh, and I had as many butter beers as I could cram into my body uh, without going into some kind of diabetic coma. They're delightful. Uh, you sh everyone should go get a butter beer. We, we discovered a new kind of butter beer. Uh, you, you can buy a butter beer and then you can go into the, they have bars in Universal Studios where you can buy adult beverages and you can say, I would like a shot of fire whiskey. And they're like, here is your shot of fire whiskey, sir. For God's sakes, don't pour that into your butter beer. And I'd be like, no, I am, I am not going to pour this shot of fire whiskey into this delightful butter beer here. 
I would never do that. It was great, people, uh, is what I'm saying. Um, uh, we had another donut in Simpsons Land. Uh, big, huge donut with uh, orange frosting. Um, pink. Very pink. pink frosting. Pink frosting. What am I thinking? Orange. Pink. I heard. I already yelled pink from the other room, and I heard it. That's how. That's how upset she was. I got the color wrong. Um, and it's huge. It was a huge donut. No one makes donuts that big in the real world. But here, it was more like a cake with pink frosting than a donut. Although I, I mean, technically, I guess cakes are just large. Well, they're not deep fried. Uh, cakes are non-deep fried large donuts in some vague food way. Uh, we went on the Universal Studio Tour. Uh, look, I got, I'm not even going to finish all this stuff. Uh, Universal Studio Tour. When I was in high school, we went to California. We went to Universal Studios. I remember going on the tour. Uh, I think I was on exactly the same tour this time. Uh, the only thing I recall being the same is we drove past that place with a shark. Um, it was not terribly impressive when I was in high school. It is still not terribly impressive. Um, a lot of some of the rest of the tour was okay. Uh, shark, not impressive people. Uh, we went to Disneyland because um, we go to Disneyland because we kind of like we were at we rode on Mr. Toad's Wild Ride twice. Um, we we. We did not take any of our special California brownies, which are legal now, with us on Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Although I think if Disneyland's looking for a way to, to up their profits a little more, which they don't need to, because that's expensive and they're raking cash in. Uh, but Mr. Toad's, you know, two hours after having one of them magic brownies, I think would be surreal. Um, we were at the Haunted Mansion. We didn't manage to get in Pirates. It was closed. We were very upset that uh, Pirates of Caribbean was closed. Um, I talked about Nerd Boat. Uh, Nerd Boat, blah, blah, blah. I didn't even get to that. Facebook. Someone said, Keith, can you, can you talk briefly about Facebook? Uh, specifically, Facebook profile photos. For God's sakes, if you're on Facebook and you have a profile photo, the profile photo can have one person in it, and that person has to be you. Not your dog, not your cat, not your child. Um, it should be a picture of you. There's one exception. A uh, picture of you with President Obama is allowed. Um, no one else, or maybe maybe Hillary Clinton. Again, you would have had to have been active in the campaign. Uh, picture of you by yourself. Not a large group. Uh, not you and your best friend from high school. Um, picture of you. That's, look, four, three, California weather. It's been raining. I talked about raining. Uh, I'm not going to get to that. Uh, there's an eclipse in August, people. You should plan to go watch it. You can't see it from California. Uh, Wyoming is the closest place. I'm not going to say where I'm going to be, although I am going to vacation and watch the eclipse in August. But you, if you can find me, and I will be on a line where the eclipse is the totality, if you can find me, I will buy you a beer during the eclipse in August. It's a two and a half minute time. So find me beforehand because I'll be looking up. See you next time, everybody. Actually done. Are we taking credit still? Does anyone know? Wow, so I ended too early with everything.